Good morning. morning. I'd like to welcome everyone to worship on this first Sunday following the celebration of Christmas and the Christ Child. I want to welcome those who continue to faithfully support us and watch us live stream as well. And before I forget it, a little bug was dropped into me here. Today is Craig Bitterly's birthday. And Robert's birthday? Okay. Robert's birthday? Okay. Okay. Well, let's just go. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Craig and Robert. Happy birthday to you. Yeah, and many more. That's correct. Be sure that you note all the announcements that are in your worship guide for you. Just want to say one day I'll be going out of town this week. My uh, uh, uncle died this past uh, Thursday, and he uh, had been sick for a long, long time with Alzheimer's and had been around the care, around the clock care for a long time and passed on Christmas Eve, and his service will be one day this week. And also remember to be with the Brian Crick family. Uh, that service is Tuesday night. Visitation is from 2 to 6 at the Sacramento Cumberland Presbyterian Church. He was the district court judge that was killed in the tornado there. And his service is Tuesday night at 6 p.m. Are there other announcements and other concerns? If not, as we begin this worship, our worship together this morning, let all people sing praises to God. Let the whole world give glory to our Lord. Let heaven rejoice, let the world rejoice. The Lord has come, the Lord is coming, and the Lord shall come again. But now this morning, let us remember together, Christ is here. Hallelujah.
me as we pray. Holy and righteous God, once again we have completed our journey and made our way to Bethlehem, celebrating the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, into the world. Our lives have been refreshed and renewed through the gifts that the Christ child brings, the gift of hope and peace and joy and love. Now, O oh God, we come this morning as your people in response to that gift. We come offering up our lives to you in worship and praise. As we continue the celebration of the birth of our Savior and the gift of everlasting life, we pray, O oh God, that all who are present this day be open to your love, to your forgiveness, to your peace, to your acceptance. May we love each other more fully and open our lives up to all the possibilities that you have in store for our lives. Give us hope for the future and a passion for life in the here and now. For we pray these things in the matchless and wonderful name of Jesus Christ our Lord, who taught us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. I hope you had a good day yesterday and for this whole holiday time and that something that you have experienced has brought joy to your heart, whether it's seeing someone or, or talking to someone on the phone or something, but just this wonderful glow at, at Christmas time. And we're going to sing a song this morning. I'm not sure how many verses Jeff's got on the screen. I heard the bells on Christmas Day. I love this song because, you know, Longfellow wrote it. It was during the Civil War, and during the Civil War he was so disgruntled by everything that was going on. You can read the whole story sometime. And he thought at once, God's dead. He's not there. Where is he? And he heard the church bells ring and he said, God's not dead. God is here with us. So we, I don't think we have any church bells here today, but we're going to stand and sing. I heard the bells on Christmas day.
before we start the song this morning, we would like to dedicate this to the memory of Charlotte Earl. She was our fourth member in this group, and we all know that she's singing in the Heavenly Choir now. Oh. 
Good morning. Ah, we're in a great mood. I can only imagine why we're so downtrodden. Christmas was yesterday. Today is not Christmas. So, of course, today is not going to be as great, right? Well, I am here to share one of my Christmas gifts with you. It's one of my favorites. It is this blue hoodie. It's very comfortable, soft, and warm. And it is special because who gave it to me? I'm sure yesterday you guys felt all sorts of love and joy from all the presents you got because you knew when you opened that present that someone thought really long and hard about what you would want, right? In the spirit of Christmas, we have this gift of Jesus. <clears throat> and the gift of Jesus in Psalms says that because of Jesus, surely uh, grace and mercy will follow me all of my days, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. Now, you guys have received a lot of gifts this Christmas, and now it can kind of feel like Christmas is over, so it's a bummer, and it all goes downhill from here. Um, but that's not true. The spirit of Christmas is joy, and we can continue to spread joy by doing this. The Bible says to go and make disciples from all different nations and people. And disciples is a fancy word for friends. We go and we tell people about Jesus, and we become friends with them, and we love them, and that continues the joy of Christmas because we've gotten all these gifts. Now it's time to give a gift, right? Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for this day. Uh, thank you for the opportunity to gather here, and let us um, continue to spread joy outside of the Christmas season. In your name we pray. Amen. This morning I want to share with you with a combined offering of Christmas Eve and the offering last Sunday. Thus far we have, a, we have collected $11,000. Uh, for the tornado victims here in Bowling Green and for Tyler Lindsay. As we prepare our hearts this morning for the giving of our morning offering, let us do so with this thought upon our hearts. What greater gift could we receive than the gift of God's own child, a child who is our light and our salvation? We who have received so much are called to join the shepherds in sharing our joy. We are challenged to join the Magi in offering our gifts to the Christ child. Come, let us give out of our abundance this morning. And once again, as you exit this morning, we encourage you to give your offering in the plates in the rear of the church. At this time, let us pray. Generous God, we offer up these gifts of love to you this day as a testimony to your glory, but also as a commitment as your disciples. We ask, O oh God, that you bless our tithes and offerings to the work and ministry in your kingdom in this world. For we humbly pray and ask these things in the strong and mighty name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, whom we pray. Amen. Will you stand with me as we sing the doxology? This morning, our scriptural lesson is only one verse, and I want us to hone in and to focus upon this one verse out of the Christmas narrative. And if you're like me, when you first heard it, you heard, for unto you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, which is Christ the Lord. And that's the way I learned it growing up uh, as a child. The New International Version 
reads the verse this way and says, Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you, Christ the Lord. But the one I want to use this morning is one that came out of the new, it's the new Revised Standard Version of the Bible. And this says, To you, to you this day, in the city of David, a Savior, the Messiah, the Lord is born. Let us pray. Now, O oh God, we ask that all the meditations of our hearts and the words of thy servant find acceptance in thy sight. O oh Lord, our strength and our redeemer, for it is in his name we humbly pray and ask. Amen. Several years ago, I had the good fortune to be able to fly over to, to Hawaii, to the island of Kauai. And while I was there, also to the good graciousness of my daughter, I was able to fly from island to island. And one of the islands that we flew to early one morning, we left early at 5.30 that morning, and we flew over to the island in Hawaii, and we flew and visited the USS Arizona Memorial at Pearl Harbor. Now, I don't know about you, but I have taken my U.S. history, I know my world history, and I knew the basics about what I hoped to experience before I arrived at Pearl Harbor that day firsthand. I knew that it was on December the 7th, 1941, that the Japanese attacked the island of Hawaii and that thousands of lives were lost because of that invasion. What a historical turning point it was because it was upon that moment that our country decided to enter into the fray of World War II. I knew all the basics, all of the history, but I was excited to maybe learn a little bit more. But I have to tell you, I was not prepared for what I was truly going to experience that day. For you see, before you go out to the memorial, and if Jeff will show it on the screen... Before you go out to the memorial there, you hop into a little boat, and that boat takes you out there. On this particular day, before I got into the boat, somebody there was greeting and shaking hands of every person and talking to them before they were allowed to get on the little boat. It was an elderly man in a wheelchair. He had a lay around his neck, of all things, and a cap that showed that he had served in our country in War War II. He asked my name, and I asked him his name, and I began in that moment to piece together what was happening. Because, you see, it wasn't just anyone who was greeting us or me that day on, to that memorial. That was, he was a Pearl Harbor survivor. He had been there. And if you've ever been to that memorial, you know that they give you a card. And that card is one of those who lost their life during that time. And then you have the opportunity to find and become whoever you are while you're out on that ship. It was one of his friends he was one of the survivors of Pearl Harbor. I can tell you this. Everything that I had learned this side of that handshake was completely different between what I experienced in that moment. That was no longer to me just an historical memorial. But what happened to me that day, it became a personal encounter. So my question for you today is, is that sometimes I think people approach Christmas in the same way that they approach maybe the way I did going to Pearl Harbor. That is, for you or at least some, it's just a kind of memorial. It's a ceremonial act. It's an act where you are touched a little bit more of the history and what happened years ago. But I want to say to you this morning that if Christmas is anything, 
Christmas is more than just some historical act that happened 2,000 years ago. Christmas should be a personal encounter because it said, for to you, to you, born this day. I love what the English poet W.H. Alden said. Our remembering the stable at once in our, for once in our life, everything in that moment becomes a you and everything else is inept. So I want you to hear me very clearly this Sunday after the celebration of Christmas. If Christmas is anything, Christmas is personal. So this morning, I want all of us to be able to experience this. I want us to be able to get close to the message of what Christmas is truly about. To you is born this day in the city of David, a Savior. I don't know if you saw this, but when COVID began in 19 or in 20, whenever it was, I saw a television program. I don't know if you have ever watched any of these episodes, but it's called SGN, Some Good News. Sometimes it is hosted by the host's wife, Emily Blunt. Other times it's hosted by a man by the name of John Kowinski. And what they were doing, they were trying to go out into the world during the darkest times it seemed in our life. And they were trying to find a few little bright spots in people's lives. Find those moments that were bright amongst all this darkness and difficulty of the day. And so they were able to find one of those moments that I happened to see. I don't know if you saw this segment or not, but go to YouTube, Some Good News, and you can watch it in its entirety. It's a story about a little girl named Audra. And Audra was a little girl who was nine years old. And she thought she experienced the worst disappointment that she had ever experienced in her life. She had anticipated and waited. She knew every song in a musical that she was just days from going to see. She longed to be able to experience that musical herself. And that musical was Hamilton. She was so excited about getting to see it. But then we know about that time all the theaters began to shut down. And the little girl thought, I'm never going to get to see this musical Hamilton. And when this story found out about this little girl they, and how truly disappointed she was, they decided that what they needed to do was to bring the show to her. And so while John is talking to little Audra, all of a sudden, and we know all about Zoom meetings, don't we? About this time, a Zoom meeting popped up and Im imparted into the conversation between the host and little Audra. And all of a sudden, Audra was face to face with the creator and writer of Hamilton, the one who had produced all the music and who had starred in the show. And then about that time, then another Zoom screen popped up, and it was all the original cast of the Broadway musical that starred in New York, and they're all singing her favorite song to her. And if that wasn't enough for that little girl to experience, John the host said, Audra, as soon as this pandemic is over, we're going to fly you and your mother to New York to see the musical up close for your very own. Now, I don't know about you, but if you didn't see that, this next clip, this was my favorite clip of the whole YouTube video. Look at this little girl's expression. That face looks like she just heard some good news, doesn't it? 
And that's what John Kowinski absolutely floored her with because I think he summarized it so well at the end of the video when he looked at the little girl that day and he said, Audra, you can't get to Hamilton, so we brought Hamilton to you. And you see, you and I, we can't get to heaven, so Christmas is about God bringing heaven to us. You and I can't get there on our own. So God brought himself to us in Jesus Christ. And while, the sh and while the stakes may not be all that high, you think, for missing a show here and there, yet we all know we live within the true limitations of our own helplessness. And if anything is going to happen for us, if we're going to be able to, we're going to have to be able to acknowledge the brokenness and the sin and the limitations of our own life. And so maybe at that point, then we do what Dietrich Bonhoeffer did years ago. And I think he gave clarity to all of this during World War II. Dietrich Bonhoeffer was one of the greatest theologians of the 21st century. And he was locked in a prison for having a conspiracy with other pastors against Hitler. It was the last Christmas that he would be alive. And in that prison, while Dietrich Bonhoeffer was reflecting on his Christmas journey, this is what he writes. We are completely dependent upon the fact that the door of freedom has to be opened from the outside. So you and I, in the midst so often of our helplessness, are like this little nine-year-old girl we're unable to help ourselves. And so what the good news of the gospel is, is that there is a Savior who does for you and me what we are unable to do for ourselves. But Christmas will never be personal if you don't hear the invitation that to you this day is born a Savior. Not just that the message is for you, but the nature of what the message is and that Christ has sent a Savior into the world to save you. And the, the bad part is, is that so many people still are so unwilling to acknowledge their need and their dependency and their brokenness for a Savior. And if they do, then they will never be able to truly experience Christmas in a personal way. It'll just remain something that happened 2,000 years ago. I love this story. Sometimes you must think all I ever do is watch TV, and that's not true. I watch very little TV. But this was another thing that was showed on the newscast. And I want Jeff to put this lady up on the screen. Her name is Mary Daniel. And what I want you to know is, if you could really see the picture in its clarity, she becomes a dishwasher. She becomes a dishwasher in an Alzheimer's nursing home. For decades, her and her husband had been married. And it was seven years ago before this picture was taken that she noticed her husband Steve's memory began to decline and his Alzheimer's continued to progress to the point that she could no longer care for her husband. And even though she put him in a long-term care facility, she went every single day to visit him. Almost every night, she would tuck him into bed and he would fall asleep he would know that she was sitting by his bed. And you can imagine that after seven years of caring for him, all of a sudden with COVID coming along, it was on lockdown. She tried FaceTiming him. She tried calling him. She tried all manner of video messaging. 
She even tried going to the facility and standing outside his window, and all that did was make him more agitated and confused. He couldn't figure out why she could not come in there in the flesh and be with him. So after 114 days of frustration and loneliness and sadness, she saw an advertisement in the paper at this long care facility. Dishwasher needed. Setting aside her pride, she said, and all the degrees she had and a Ph.D., setting aside everything that her life stood for, she said, I'm going to apply for that dishwasher in that long care facility. And there's a picture of her there at work. And when you look at her, you will know that the joy of the Lord is present with her. Because she would go every day through all the safety protocols and the requirements and the tests, she had washed those dishes, and she washed those dishes for only one reason. And I didn't pull that image up, but you can find it also on YouTube. She did it so she could look at the love of her life from day to day, face to face. For you see, we believe that not only the Creator paid a great price in order to come near us, we also believe that he set aside the glory of heaven so that he could draw close and near to all of us. If Christmas is anything, Christmas is personal. For unto you is born this day. And as long as you go on in life pretending that you don't have limitations and that there's not brokenness in your life and there's not sin that needs reconciling and forgiving, as long as you stay in that position, then Christmas will never become personal for you because you will never know the Savior. We all have to come to, to grips with the fact that the king of glory, the king of the universe, humbled himself and took on the lowly position at Christmas to be born in a stable. Why? So that he might be close to you. What we discover at Christmas is the intersection of our limitations and God's limitless love. One of my favorite encounters and stories and pictures in the Gospel of Luke it's not found in the Christmas story, but it's at the end of the Gospel of Luke. And this is the scene, and you'll be able to recall it. When Jesus is hanging on the cross, he says to a thief, Truly I tell you, this day you will be with me in paradise. For you see, beloved friends, paradise is ultimately not just some place we go to. It's not even Hawaii as great as that is. Paradise is ultimately a person. And it's found in the person of Jesus Christ. Who came at Christmas so that you might have life everlasting through faith in his son, Jesus Christ. So if Christmas is anything for all of us, I pray this day that Christmas is personal for you. Let us pray. Our Lord and our God, we confess that we see this event oftentimes as a memorial and something that we keep at arm's length. And yet, oh God, when we do that, we separate ourselves from you. We do so, God, because we pretend that we're okay and that we're enough. Lord, help us all to acknowledge and confess our need and our dependence and our help that we find in you to your limited, matchless grace and love that is available to us in Jesus Christ. 
Heavenly Father, if for anybody who is yet to know you personally as the one who has saved us, as the one who humbles himself to be near us, we pray today that they might have a personal encounter and that by your spirit you'll reach down through the heavens and through the ages and draw near to them. We thank you, God, for we know that this is a thin space where heaven and earth are so close to one another that they almost touch. So we pray, dear God, that all who are present here this day will allow you to have their place in their life. For we pray in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. We're going to stand and sing our hymn of consecration at this time. And if there are those of you that need to respond in any way, we want to invite you to do so at this time as we sing, O Little Town of Bethlehem. This week, I can't say he got, they got taller. He didn't get any better looking, but they got taller. <laughs> By now, you should know that Jim and I have this ongoing battle. I'm almost afraid to taste the water here, thinking he put something in it. <laughs> so when he's head usher and I drink and I just kind of go down, you'll know it happened. Will we always go forth from this place remembering that the light shines into the darkness and wherever light exists, darkness and light cannot coexist in the same space. So may the light of Christ's love shine forth in your life and through the light of that love may others come to know Jesus, Christ as their Savior, up close and personal in 2022 as we look now for our benediction. Do not be afraid. Share the good news. A Savior has been born to you. Amen.